On today's show, we've got even more of your questions coming up, but my Apple TV 4K has just arrived. Uh, we'll be unboxing this in another video. But today is new Apple products day for everyone. Everyone has got their new stuff arriving. There's gonna be videos all over YouTube, so I'm not gonna make this a particularly long one. We're gonna smash through some of your questions, and if you've got a question you want answered in a future show, all you need to do, ask down in the comments with hashtag iCaveAnswers. So, let's get into it. And before we start, yesterday I read the questions. Before, we've had Siri asking the questions. So, leave me a comment down in the question. Do you want me or Siri to read the questions out? Let me know because some of you seem to really prefer it when I do. And we're going to do that for today. First up, A. Hughes, iCave Answers. Do you think that the upcoming MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch will come in more colours than the usual silver and space grey? A matte black version has been widely predicted, but do you think there will be colours as well? Perhaps darker tones than the new iMacs? Will the keyboard stay black or is white a possibility? Okay, cool question. Um, I think we are going to get more muted colours than we get with the uh, iMacs and with probably the MacBook Airs that we've got on the way as well. Um, so yeah, I think we're definitely going to get our space greys back. I think we may well get a black. That would be awesome. And I think we might still get some lighter colours too, but I don't think they'll be as bright. I think we will get our black bezels around the uh, around the displays and black keys on the keyboards. That's my expectation, but what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Evan Rogers asks, Ultra wide band like that in the U1 chip has exceptional data speeds for short range communications, 480 plus megabits per second. Could Apple be planning to use lossless audio via U1 chip instead of AirPlay? Okay, that's uh, another interesting one. The only thing is, it depends how long those distances are. I'm not particularly familiar with the kind of range on a U1 chip, but I would say for something like Bluetooth, you want it to be at least several meters. Uh, you want it to be so that you could leave your phone on the side in the kitchen and be wandering around the kitchen. Maybe if you pop upstairs, you can still hear your audio. Um, so I would say that it's possibly gonna be a little bit tricky for that. Whereas uh, if they're using AirPlay, especially if you're at home, it might even be able to use your local network to send that Wi-Fi signal around and, uh, and and keep your signal even better at home. So I would think they're gonna go AirPlay, but I mean, it's always a possibility. But the, the thing I would say is that the current AirPods Max and AirPods Pro and AirPods don't contain U1. So it would be brand new hardware if that's the case. Billy G asks, Dave, I bought the new upper tier 24 inch iMac and separately bought a new USB mechanical keyboard. Can I still use the Apple keyboard for authentication slash fingerprint and the USB keyboard for typing? Yep, there should be no problems with that at all. You can have multiple keyboards attached to a Mac. Uh, what I don't think you can do is have multiple Macs attached to the same keyboard, um, especially over Bluetooth, unless it's one of these special Bluetooth keyboards that has switching built in. That shouldn't be a problem at all, but I would guess that your USB keyboard has probably got USB-A, so you might need to make sure you've got an adapter ready. Rogues in the House asks, just a speculation, do you think it's feasible that Apple would develop a 13 inch MacBook type device that could dual boot iOS and macOS using the trackpad as a substitute for touchscreen when in iOS mode? Uh, that's a weird concept. I don't think that they would, basically because macOS can already run iOS and iPadOS apps. There's no real need. I don't see what the advantage would be for using a, a trackpad on a macOS iOS hybrid that doesn't really make too much sense to me um, what kind of thing unless you're thinking maybe for the apps that haven't got a Mac version like Call of Duty Mobile or some of the things like that Facebook Instagram but then I think I feel like they just wouldn't want it to go over to that platform at all so it would just be a, a really weird kind of mess I think Randomness R asks, hey, when will Apple make an 18 inch MacBook Pro? I want a bigger screen. I'm not sure that they will. I know we talked about it in a previous show how they could possibly fit an 18 inch display into a slightly larger chassis, but not hugely larger by shrinking down those bezels. It would be cool because they used to do a 17 inch, but uh, I don't see an 18 inch on the way at the moment. Adiatha Rajoglaplan asks, what are your thoughts on the updated 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro that's gonna release late this year or early next year with the M2 MacBook Air getting a redesign and mini LED display and M2 MacBook Pro probably getting neither of those. Don't you think the new MacBook Air will cannibalize the sales of MacBook Pro? And will the mini LED display in the redesigned MacBook Air be almost as good as the ones in the 14 inch and 16 inch M1X MacBook Pro if Apple allows the same liquid Retina XDR moniker? Thanks for answering and sorry for the long question. 
Okay, so the only reason that I think the MacBook Air would get a liquid retina display with the mini LEDs is if they are doing as well a MacBook, which would be the base model replacement that would have the regular display. It wouldn't have the back, it might not even have a backlit keyboard. They might take some of those things out to cut the costs. But if the MacBook Air stays as the base level, then I don't think it will get the mini LED display for a long time at least. I also don't think that the 13-inch uh, MacBook Pro with M2 is really a realistic thing. I think they're more likely to put the M2 and the M1X into the 14-inch chassis when they get to that point, and then keep the uh, M1 MacBook Pro 13-inch where it is. Now, the other thing in your question is what about cannibalizing sales? Apple doesn't give a crap about that because they're only cannibalizing themselves. It's a choice between two items. There is no cannibalization. People are not going out there that would have bought both and now only buying this one. They're gonna buy the one that works best for them. It doesn't matter about cannibalization. That's not even a thing. Team Kinetics asks, do you think there is a case for or will be a use case for a 16 gigabytes of RAM in the iPad Pro in the near future? How revolutionary do you expect the announcements to be at WWDC or have Apple just shipped iPads with the same chips as Macs to save on production costs? So if it was just a case of saving on production costs, then they wouldn't have bothered putting a 16 gigabyte option in there for the for the larger storage ones. It doesn't make any particular sense to do that because you can get as much storage as you want on the M1 with just eight gigabytes because I think the storage is actually not quite on the chip, but it's very close to it. I think Apple must have some stuff up their sleeves for iPadOS because they're kind of billing it as being equivalent to a Mac now. So I think there must be some of those pro apps uh, now that everything's built on at least the same language, it might not have the same core technologies at the moment, we might just see a full rewrite of Final Cut or some of those other higher-end um, editing packages or higher-end professional packages like Xcode, things like that. I think they all will come to the iPad because there's no reason that you couldn't code on an iPad that's got the same chip in it as a Mac. It's just a case of form factor. But yeah, I don't think it's just to save on production costs. It is a great thing that it does save on production costs, but by the same token, this is the chip that the, I, that the iPads would have had pretty much anyway, because it is an A14X, it's just got a couple of extra chunks on there, like the x86 emulator hardware and the hypervisor and things like that. Doug Willis asks, IK Vances, I'm interested in your views on single core performance of reported new M1X SOCs. The new chips have been reported as having only two efficiency cores vis-a-vis -vis four cores on the M1. Dropping to two cores makes no difference to single core performance. Why have more than one in the first place? The single core performance of the M1 is what most report as being the most notable for a snappiness of everyday use. Is the new chip likely to lessen this experience? If so, this seems odd. So no, the efficiency cores are not what is being measured for single core performance. The It's the performance of one individual Firestorm core, which is the high performance chips. So the what I would say is, in most cases, the, uh, the efficiency cores are running things like UUI in Mac OS in general. So it's, it's making sure that your screen looks right, it's moving windows around, moving stuff like that around, it's running the odd web browser window, and then your high performance cores are the ones that kick in when you need to do something a bit more demanding. So those are the ones that are being measured when we have a single core performance of 1720 or something. That is a high performance core. That is not one of the lower uh, powered cores. If you were to remove two of those to make space for more of the high powered cores, that makes sense, that's absolutely fine. Uh, it won't affect the single core performance because that is coming from the Firestorm cores. And it wouldn't affect it anyway because it's each individual core, not the sum total of four efficiency cores, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. So as I say, quick show today, I know there's gonna be massive amounts of stuff going on with Apple with uh, the new hardware arriving with people. So go watch some cool videos. Let me know if you want me or Siri to read the questions in future and have a great day. See you on the next one.